Welcome everyone, this is Zahn with Repo Products. Today's screencast video is how to take an AutoCAD title block, as you see here on the screen, and convert it to a Revit template file for title block usage. The first thing you want to do is look at the actual CAD file in the AutoCAD environment if you have AutoCAD. And the reason we do this is we want to ensure that everything looks clean the way you want to work with it, mainly just the line work and in the graphics. The text and any of the fields that you see here, and even the revision window, will be adjusted accordingly when you bring it into Revit. Second thing you might want to do is you might want to purge the file, just in case there are any strange anomalies that you can rip out. Once you've done that, you'll save the file, and then you can close the file and even AutoCAD if you need to. So I'll head over to the File tab not to the big blue R because that was the change in 2018 and I'll say new and click title block in here they give you pre-made sheets 8.5 by 11 up to 36 by 48 and if you need to you can make your own size this one is a size D 24 by 36 so let's start with D and click open and you'll get this rectangular box and if you select the line work you'll get temporary dimensions that give you the dimensions that says 36 by 24. Now that's just to help you verify that's the size of the sheet that you're working with. From there we'll go to insert tab and we'll import the CAD file. Um, I created the CAD file and called it a CAD title block under the temp folder. I'll select it and for now for the colors I'm going to preserve them and the reason is I want to see the color CAD content against the black and white Revit content. Current view only is checked, so that way it only shows up in this particular view. Because the title block and the cat file was cleaned up, I can specify all the layers, and there really is only you know one or two or three, depending on the line work and the text um, and the graphics. <clears throat> but you can also choose just visible or specify to ensure you place check marks for just the layers that you want to bring in. So I'm going to choose specify just so you can see that feature. Import units, leave it to AutoDetect <clears throat> so we can figure out what the units are in the CAD file and convert it if necessary. Positioning, we'll leave it origin, origin to origin and then I'll just click open. And it comes in, it looks like this. <clears throat> You'll also see all the different layers um, of the CAD file. And for now, I'm going to bring everything in. Click OK. So if I were to uncheck some of these uh, layers, then that data will not show up. Clicking OK, the CAD file comes in. Now we said that this is supposed to be 24 by 36. Here's 36, here's 24. That means that this title block was drawn slightly smaller to fit. Now, as you bring it in and you put your mouse over it, you'll see there's a tooltip pop-up that tells you it's an imported object. <clears throat> and if you select it, since it's a CAD file, and we placed it origin to origin, it's pinned down and it won't move. We do have the ability to delete layers and explode either the first layer of data or shall explode, or everything. I recommend you do not explode the CAD file because it ends up making the Revit file heavy and a little um, wonky, if you will. You do have the ability to click Query and you can select any entity and it will tell you what that data is. <clears throat> we also have the ability to click Visibility Settings and adjust to show it whether in coarse, medium, or fine level of detail. So the trick really is at this point how do you format this information to display nicely on this sheet of paper? Since I really don't care about any of the text and I don't care about the revision schedule or anything like that <clears throat> or any of the line of the text here because I'm going to be using labels then uh, for the sake of ease I'm going to actually explode this. It'll make life easier for me because I will select the entity and I'll do a full explode once I've done that, I'm going to delete what I don't need. So I will just grab all this information here and delete it. Grab all this information. And you might want to zoom in to be a bit more accurate. And then down here, <clears throat> um, I'm going to use leave these pieces of text here as placeholders to help me draw what I need to draw. So now that I've placed everything the way I like, I'm going to just grab what I need and move them up and really kind of format it exactly how I want in regards to the shape of it.
So now that we have that, <clears throat> we're going to take a look at the information that has been exploded. You'll notice that the line work coming from AutoCAD has now been placed under a subcategory based upon the layer name of the object, which is a bit strange. So best thing to do, delete it one at a time and go in here and use the line tool to create the line work again. And we'll delete this one. And you have to go through this process of uh, changing the line work and cleaning it up. You can try to select the line work and change its category, but it becomes a mess. So for example here, if I click in here, um, I can do thin lines, wide lines, so on and so forth. So for now, let's do thin line. And if we do that, it'll clean it up. <clears throat> so for the sake of speed and this video, instead of manually drawing each one, I'm going to select the line work and try to select all of them visible in the view, which I can't do in a title block, which is a bit strange. So you'll go through the process of just grabbing all the line work. And I'll just do a window crossing like this. I'll hold the control key down and pick all the other lines. Head in here and do a window crossing like this. Grab this one, grab this one, and this one. So all my lines are selected. And I'll hit filter. And I want to see uncheck the text note because I accidentally clicked text note. And now I can go in here and I make them all thin lines. Done. I can then take this line and pull it down to whatever distance that I need. Maybe we'll do this as an eighth of an inch. <clears throat> okay, so now it looks graphically correct with the line work. This is an image, and it's coming in as a raster image, and that's fine if you like it. <clears throat> or you can delete it if you don't need it. Now in regards to the text, go in here, and we want to introduce labels. For correlation in AutoCAD, you have fields. In Revit, you have um, labels. So heading over to the Create tab of the ribbon, you can click Label. <clears throat> and then you can specify its placement, for example, centered and in the middle. And I'll just click over here for now just to place it. And you'll notice I have an Edit Label window that opens up. And here we can specify any parameter that we want. So maybe we want to specify the uh, it says owner and project name, so we'll look for the owner. And if we don't have an owner, we'll pick something similar. We'll say uh, organization name. And we'll click OK. And as you can see, it comes in. <clears throat> now this particular label is called tag1. And if we go to the type properties, you can see it's got a color, line weight, font, and a printed text height. And if that's the right height that you like, then that's good. If not, then you can adjust it. And then, so for now, I'm going to delete the original text, and I'll create a reference plane for dead center, <clears throat> or a reference line. And that way, it'll help me with the alignment of the information. So then I'll take this, and I'll move this over here, and I'll place it. And adjust the box as well to be within the limits of the area that you're working with. And you have to go through this process of creating all of these labels. Now, when you do create the labels for each one of these, some of them are just text and some of them are label. So this would be a label, this is a label, this is a label, this one, and all of these would be labels as well as this. These over here are just standard text. So to do the text, um, for the sake of simplicity, just head over to the Create tab, click Text. And in here, you'll see Text Note 1. <clears throat> And they give you quite a few to work with. You might want to rename them or to modify the properties. But I'll leave this one for now. And I'll click it as left justified. And I'll click over here and I'll just start typing. Project number. Now, we know that's just a simple piece of text. And as you can see, it's much larger than what it needs to be. So I'm going to go in here and go to the type properties and make the adjustment. So maybe it's going to be 3 32nd of an inch high. Now it's much smaller, it looks a little bit more logical. We'll delete this one, and we'll create a reference line again to make sure we're drawing it nice and clean wherever we want. So let's say I draw a reference line like this. Then I can take this line, this uh, piece of text, and we'll move it where we want. <clears throat> and we'll place it like so. And then you can click and drag this arrow, and you can see that it adjusts this way. 
now that you've done this, you can do all of them in the same manner. So if the next one would be date, we can delete that. We'll just do a control copy and hold the shift key as you're doing control copy and it will copy down vertically and orthogonally. So then you can go in here and you can put in the date. Like so. And you rinse and you repeat. <clears throat> and then lastly, for example, so the project name, um, title on the sheet is basically the same thing as this label here, but a different parameter. Same thing with this one. So let's do this one just so that it's, because it looks a little different than the rest. Um, we'll create a new label. And we can still use the same tag, that's fine. <clears throat> and I'll go to place one. And this is going to be the sheet number. So scroll down, look for sheet number, click to place it. You have a sample value here, you can leave it or you can make it anything you want as a value so people can see it. Click OK and it gets placed. And as you can see, it's not the right size. So if I were to take this and go to the type properties and change the height, it would affect this one as well. So we don't want that. We want to take the existing one that we have, this A101 that we just made, we want to duplicate that label. We'll call it tag two, just to be safe. And then you can make this whatever height. So it looks like it's not a quarter, it looks like maybe three eighths of an inch height, I'm guessing. And it looks okay. So then we'll delete the existing piece of text and we'll move this one exactly where we want. Okay. And make sure that, again, that box is uh, wide enough to accommodate <clears throat> the uh, number, if you will, okay? And then again, making sure your alignment is middle and centered, okay? So you have to go through this process of cleaning all that up and deleting what you don't need. And then you can bring it into your project. Now as for the revision um, schedule, if you head over to view tab of the ribbon, <clears throat> you'll see revision schedule command right here. Start the command. And it'll give you revision sequence, the number, the description, and the date. If you need issued by and issued to, you can click this arrow or double click each one to add that as well. We can head over to sorting and grouping. It's already pre-set up for you nicely. So just click OK and that view comes in. Now, how do I take that schedule view and put it on the title block? Expand the view is all and head back to your views. So if you close this, it'll take you back to the view. And then you can drag and drop this revision schedule onto that and then place it however you want. Um, unfortunately, with the design of the re revision schedule window, you can't really snap to um, where exactly where you want. It's kind of, it, it shows that it's snapping, but it's not actually snapping. So be cautious of that. Um, and so just kind of eyeball it where you want for now. It might be, you know, getting closer and closer. See? Um, <clears throat> and you see, as you can tell, I'm trying to move it really, really tiny, and it won't even let me move tiny. So use your arrow keys, and that will help a little bit as well. And so now that you have your Revit title block sheet created, save the file, file, save as, family, place it where you want, call it test, Revit, title block. And now that it's created, go ahead and put it into a project. So I'll click New to start a new architectural project. I'll hit Control Tab on my keyboard to swap back to this file, and I'll load it into the project. Now that it's loaded, I head over to Sheets All, right click and say New Sheet, <clears throat> and use that Test Revit title block. Click OK, and it creates a brand new one. And then there you go. Okay. So as soon as long as you get your labels created properly and sorted and organized properly in regards to the orientation and the data that's coming through, then your information shows up properly. Okay, And just so you know, for labels, <clears throat> when you go to rename labels like A101 or the name, it'll adjust on the sheet. So if I call this A1, it'll place it. Um, obviously, I didn't do a label for the sheet name, but that's OK. You guys understand. Um, how that process works. And that's it. That's how you take um, an AutoCAD title block and bring it into Revit to make a Revit title block. Thank you very much for watching.